Let's make the converse run star motion CX shoe. So I was just browsing the internet when I came across this shoe and immediately thought, hold on, I'm gonna make this. It looks super cool and pretty easy to make. Boy, was I wrong. Same as the last shoe I made, I started with a dynamish blocking to get the overall shape of the shoe, then masked out the different segments, duplicated the subtool, deleted everything outside the mask and remeshed it. For the tongue I just used it plain and deformed it into shape, that way I made sure the topology will stay rectangular which from what I noticed will help with getting the textures to flow the right way. Once I had all the pieces, I used panel loops to extrude them, which works out great. Then I was getting ready to create those unique parts of the sole. I tried remeshing the sole better using Z remesher guides and polygroups, and started masking out those spiky parts and extruded them. At this point, this whole project got really, really messy. For some reason, I just couldn't figure out how to get these shapes to come out right. That heel part has these spikes, but also has the star-shaped hole in it. And maybe sculpting them wasn't that big of a deal, but ending up with a decent topology was just 
impossible. So there were several attempts using different techniques. They all came out fine until the retopologizing part that never really worked. So here I'm just super fast forwarding all my failed attempts and I'll get back to it later and make it better. Pull tab and that strap on the tongue I just made in cinema because it's just so much easier.
Even though I already made shoelaces in the old school Vans video, I kind of dreaded making them again here, but man, this method with making a curved spline out of the Z-Sphere chain is just so simple and easy. And surprisingly, it works out great. Sometimes I get lost using the curves in ZBrush because it's kind of tricky to control them. They wild out when you move them and it's tricky to get the right rotation along the splines. But here I think I just locked the start and end of the curves and used the elastic option on the curve and carefully twisted each part until I got the right orientation overall. And after very subtle smoothing and adjusting, all that was left was to micro adjust the surface with the topology move brush, extrude the flat plane and shape some details. And after sending it to Cinema 4D and fixing a couple of bad polygons, the topology was perfect, just a perfect plane along the spine, which meant the texturing was gonna follow the shape of the laces perfectly. So that was really easy. If you like this content and want to support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon or membership where you can find these project files for free, watch these videos with no ads, get free products from the store, as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Also, you can buy this model as well as other material and model packs on my new plastic gum road and also prints and pins I made on the pink eye gum road. And I totally understand that not everyone can support that way, but even subscribing and liking the video helps the channel or giving me a follow on Instagram at Ojang or the channel at Brand New Plastic. And if you want to help build a community, share your work or just fuck around, join our Discord. I'll leave all the links in the description. Either way, I really appreciate you. So even though it probably wouldn't have made a huge difference, I wanted to cut out holes for the laces. The topology was pretty good and I knew using the boolean method to cut out the holes would completely mess it up, but I decided to try it anyway. And surprisingly, after a few attempts of z-remeshing using the z-remesh guides, polygroups, and specifically adding creases to the edges of the holes, it eventually worked out way, way better than I expected. Okay, so this is my, I don't know, fourth attempt of making the sole parts. This time I decided to make it in cinema using perfectly triangular shapes along the spline, which allowed me to more easily get a really clean shape along the sole. And then I exported both shapes back to ZBrush and merged them together with Boolean, which created separate polygroups for the spiky shapes and the sole. And I added creases all around the spiky parts and remeshed using the creases which ended up with a decent apology that I further fixed in cinema and did the same thing with the star shape. It was so messy that I can't even find the footage where I made it work. I think I forgot to record it or something because it looks like it's missing. Then after everything looked almost clean enough, the thing that actually made it all work was that I ended up remeshing using symmetry, which always makes the remeshing much better. I think that's what I should have done way in the beginning, but the object isn't symmetrical, so I was like, I'm not gonna use symmetry. But at this point, I kind of realized it'll be much easier to make it symmetrical, get cleaner topology, and just move the shape around to match it back to its original shape. That's it, that's what I done, and it finally worked. I mean, I should have done it way, way in the beginning. It's so stupid. But hey, I guess that's how you learn.
For the front part of the sole, I realized I don't even need to go to cinema. I just created all the shapes in ZBrush, boolean them together, and remeshed using symmetry, and then shaped the object back to its original shape. Little did I know, I'll have to come back to this part and fix a major issue. But yeah, getting these sole parts done was an extremely messy process. And you'll now see me just manually fixing all sorts of bad polygons, holes in the mesh, and all sorts of topological issues.
And looking at the stitches on the top of the tongue, I wanted to give it a try and actually sculpt them so they feel more tangible and pronounced. I usually like to make stitches in the texture, but this stitch was so robust, I thought it would be better to make it actual geometry. Then brought it all into substance and started texturing. Everything went pretty smooth here. I kept the resolution pretty low so it won't lag so much, which is why the textures look kind of bad in close up, but they turned out great.
Okay, so remember I told you I was gonna have a problem with the front sole? Now you can see what I was referring to. This material is translucent, so you can see all the parts that intersect with the white part behind it. And it looks absolutely awful, which meant I needed both the pink part and the white part of the sole to have perfectly matching surfaces that don't intersect. After several bad attempts, what I ended up doing was to subtract the front part of the sole from the other part, remesh that other part and clean it up. It wasn't perfect, but it worked. Honestly, in hindsight, it was kind of obvious what I needed to do. Then I just had to sculpt in that swooshy groove along the side of the sole again. And I also added that Converse imprint on the very bottom of the shoe. And that's it, all that was left was to light it up. I wanted to keep it simple and very bright, so I just used a very large area light from the right and a smaller focused strong light from the left, which, cre which creates sharper shadows and really brings out all the detail. And I duplicated that light to light up the background. And I also used a very, very subtle HDRI for some ambient light. I also further adjusted the materials and added hair to the laces to really get some beautiful macro detail on them. I also added very, very subtle subsurface scattering to the laces. And very lastly, I just wanted to add more detail to the canvas material to break it up. It felt a bit too perfect. And that was it, that's the final results. I honestly absolutely fucking love it. I think it came out great, almost perfect. There are some small issues and some details that in hindsight I should have taken care of, but man, there were crazy ups and downs with this model. All these issues with the soles came out of left field and completely took me by surprise. It literally took me two days just to figure out the soles. It was crazy. But man, I learned so fucking much. I love these videos and I don't know, I'm really learning to love sculpting shoes. Something about them is a beautiful mix between organic shapes, hard surface shapes, and just a very practical design thing. It's like a sculpture that has very, very specific purpose that we all know and understand and use every single day. I don't know, there's something just cool about it. So yeah, you can buy this model from my Gumroad, check out the pink eye Gumroad for pins and prints I made, and if you want this project file you can get it on my Patreon. And shout out to all my amazing patrons and members you see on the screen right now that help make these videos happen. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.